So in this video I'm going to talk about P5 Plaguebringer at level 50. Um, this was the first demon I leveled up all the way and got P5. This is my current build on Plague. So I switched these two from now and then, but now I'm just running like this. Uh, just because I think it's better than the spin. Spin is only good if you like trap survivors and are able to like pin them with the spin. And spin is also good on buck when there's a bunch of warriors. But you don't you're not gonna down somebody on book with the spin. And it this doesn't increase damage on book. <clears throat> so I think this is probably the best. Uh, I'm not expecting to demonic dash cooldown. Or Grandmaster Dash. Uh, I'm not really worried about getting my units back faster. I'm just worried about the damage. My whole goal for the game is to flood the field with elites. So if they hit them with, you know, an attack, any type of attack, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Uh, same with the basics here. They have a lot of health as well and balance bar. And if they do pincer, they're going to do a lot of damage on the survivors. I expect into efficiency evil for elites and basics. As you can see I'm not expecting to boss at all. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, they nerf boss into the ground and she's not viable anymore. Um, and I'm fully expecting to blight damage and combat fatigue so if they are blighted they're doing reduced damage for the max amount of time which is 15 seconds um this is just so i can they can have more blights which is 14 uh per second damage because of this uh i also like the cooldown reduction on cauldron you can get cauldron twice during book phase with this ability um, you could fully spec into basics here, but the reason I'm fully spec into elites more is because Hunter Ash is such a picked character. Like every game I get into, there's always a Hunter Ash. It's understandable because he's so good against the basics and damage overall. So I rather just feel, and the elites take me less melee damage. So he has to waste ammo on the elites, or the warriors are going to take unnecessary damage from these elites. And same with the support. Uh, this this whole build is like the reason why the counter to plague is running two hunters, a uh, warrior, and a support. But plague is such a uh, less pick demon nowadays because of ball and puppeteer. Puppeteer is like a guaranteed win on book if you know the rotation correctly. Even if they have a hunter ash and you have the build for it. And then ball is good because he's just able to put so much pressure in the early game. The dealing part he isn't good against is book phase. And that's just like he's okay at it. So she comes in third. So people normally pick their survivors based on the, the top two demons, which is they both simply have the same kit, right? They're all based on fear and possessions. So they go leader Ash, a leader, warrior, hunter, and support. So if they go two hunters, it's bad against puppeteer and it's bad against ball. Bad up against Puppeteer because the Elites takes a little less range damage. Not to mention they'll get possessed more. And down their teammates. And that's the same thing with Ball. Uh, you have a better chance of downing all your teammates with the Hunter. So, nowadays the double Hunter meta is, is gone. Thanks to Ball and Puppeteer's strength now. Um, if you know that you're going up against a plague p5 the best team comp to go 
with is Annie Hunter Ash. Um, blacksmith and Henry and uh, blacksmith will be using and everybody just uses a sledge because once cauldron is down like the balance part for the elites are going to be awful and you're not going to be able to really damage book at the end of the game um Honash is there to depossess the basics when cauldrons are is up on book So that's kind of like your worst team comp to go against. You could say that um, David could be the support and he uses a nail gun. So you could focus Cauldron and be able to do balance bar damage with the nail gun, but he goes through it so quickly. That's kind of bad. Um, once again, you could go Ruby. Like Ruby could is good against every demon. You know, so you can go Ruby, Annie, Hunter Ash, and Blacksmith. And really be able to, like, do very well against Plague. Because all of them have tons of dodges to really dodge the basics and the elites. And the damage reduction that Ruby provides, Blacksmith, makes it incredible to go against plague um, to be honest you could really say that's like the best team comp against any demon except puppeteer yeah except puppeteer I mean yes the hunter Ash is gonna be just doing so much damage in balance bar with the double barrel that it could work but honestly, for Puppeteer, I think a better team comp would be Ruby, Scotty, uh, Hunter Ash, and any support, really. Any support would be fine. Uh, I don't think Pablo is very good with Ruby, just because his ability doesn't really work with her. So any other supports besides Pablo. That's if you know you're going up against them. Like, this game has not been out a lot long enough where you kind of start to know people's names. And you're like, oh, this guy plays this <clears throat> this character, and so you kind of build a team comp around that to kind of go against that. If you're trying to have a competitive feel to the game, if you're just worried about leveling big characters, like I am, I normally just go whatever character I feel like going. Um, I feel like this build is very strong. You don't really need demonic dash cooldown because you're able to put so much pressure on them that it's harder for them to get off uh, the revive. Like obviously, if they have a hunter ash, they could depossess the basic. But if you're using an elite to kind of stall out the revive, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, if they have a Henry, yeah, that's the only time this doesn't really work. And you need a demonic dash, but at the same time, like if they're going down that easily, that they need the Henry to use his ability always to get the rest, you're gonna be fine on book. Like this, this is not not only a damage beginning phase; it's also a book phase build. So. Yeah, it's not really necessary to, like, secure the downs with this build. Because, uh, you're able to win on book. Now, if they have a Ruby and, or a Annie, then it's a little bit harder to go for book. But, her P5 here increases the resistance on Calder. Exactly very useful. And our P1 is very useful as well. So, you're able to get more spins and more damage on book because of this. And they really have to focus it. Good survivors will focus the first cauldron placement. They won't fo focus the second because the book will be so low that they'll be worried about the possessed unit there. 
and you may be able to destroy both because they're not focusing cauldron. Good ways to take out cauldron is the repeating crossbow, some machine gun, and nail gun. The people that should be focusing cauldron is everybody except the hunter. And you're like, why everybody except the hunter? Who's this? Combat fatigue. Everybody's doing less damage to the unit anyone ways. So you could be like, well, the balance bar. Yeah, but Cauldron also helps with balance bar as well. So here, expert at alchemist. Thirty-five percent reduction in balance bar damage. This is why just run Cauldron is so important. Against plague. You your unit will literally die out before your balance bar gets destroyed if Cauldron is up. So they're getting kind of in a race for damage when what they should be doing is trying to all go for Cauldron, destroying it. And the Hunter Ash, or the Hunter that you have, is dealing with the Elite or the Basic. If it's a Basic and the, the Warrior's Fake is focusing on the Basic while Cauldron is up, all the Basic has to do is to spin. And then all of a sudden, that Warrior has 20% damage reduction. It doesn't make sense for why the warrior would go for it. So, you could say if you're running Annie or Ruby, the Ruby can be focusing the unit as well. Right? As the warrior goes for Cauldron and support does as well. And that's why you want them to have like submachine guns and a nail gun. Shotguns are the best thing against the elites. Uh, Blunderbuss don't do enough damage to the elites and the time for reload they're going to get a lot of hits on buck because of it uh, obviously if you have an Annie and a Ruby you'll be able to do a lot of damage but they're still going to get off another, enough hits and stomps because when you're on buck you want to use filthy splatter here instead of the only time you want to do corrosive blast on buck is when they're like all warriors and you just need to get a blight on them so they do less damage to you. And that way you could just go for book entirely. Because if you do the, the stomp instead, you're not going to be hitting them with the blight, so they're going to be doing, you know, their normal amount of damage to you. So, uh, I'm going to play a game. I'm going to save. Yeah, I have to cut the commentary here, and then I'll play the game. And. Uh, attach it to this kind of tutorial guide on what kind of build you should run. So, enjoy the gameplay. So, unfortunately, the commentary I didn't record, I left my back baby. So, I'm just going to give it a commentary to this gameplay. Um, it wasn't all that exciting more impressive, but uh, the survivors really gave me a uh, run for my money. But you'll see that the warrior actually has a legendary chainsaw, and so because I was able to destroy my boss very quickly, and um, my basics, but you'll see that he uh, struggles with the elites. And that's because, I say it all the time, at least uh, take less melee damage. And not only that, when they go down, they leave a puddle, and you can't dodge in it. So you'll see in situations where I kind of take advantage of that, and use a basic to kind of down the Arthur, because I see that he's in the puddle. Um, in the beginning of the game, I don't go for the survivors. I kind of just set up, and you're going to see me... Flipping cars. I'm not proud of it, but um, I, know, I just think with the big map, it's kind of needed. Like even though I flipped the cars, I didn't pressure the survivors going from point to point, and then I made I made it a point not to. There was a point when they finished the first one, first uh, the pages. 
When they finished pages at Mama's Liquor, uh, I trapped them in a certain area, but they were able to get out that very quickly. So that's kind of why I'm using this gameplay, is because um, the other games I was able to record, I recorded like 10 games, and not a single one of them worked as a team. At least these people worked as a team. I don't know if they were a group or what, but uh, I was just happy that they were working as a team. And covering each other. And yes, they don't have a hunter, so this is like I should be showing gameplay where I'm going against my worst team composition to go against, which would be like two hunters, a support, and a uh, warrior. But once again, those hard games are hard to find. Because of what the meta is now, with puppeteer and a ball. So, um, if I had to guess what they were thinking, I was gonna go. Mm, that seems like kind of a ball comp, not really a puppeteer. Like if they knew I was gonna go puppeteer, they would have went a hunter ash. If they had a hunter ash. Um, this is if it's a team conflict. I don't. I think they are uh, working as a team. So since I like to set up the game, I'm just kind of getting the cars rid of the fire tower because um, it's hard to get out of fire tower area, and I'm not really worried about like stopping them early. It doesn't matter to me. The big map is kind of like bad for demon and survivor. It's hard for survivors to find pink Fs if the demon pressures them early, and it, it's hard for the demon to find their energy to put pressure on them. Um, so, I make the mistake and start trapping this area without having trapped the so I have trapped this out with basics, which I could have probably downed them later on in the game, you'll see, uh, if I just maxed out my traps and really put pressure here. Like, one survivor makes one big mistake and it kind of ends up to their downfall at the domino effect, because they come to go save them. And it makes sense that they go to save them, because he... The storm isn't coming, but once they kind of recover, the problem is they recover and oh, the storm comes while they're trying to recover. And I take that to my advantage and I don't DM them or anything like that. I just block them from escaping. Now. I like to flip the car on that little ledge there. And I try to flip the other car, but it takes me a lot longer. And I go back to this car because I didn't hear the brake. So I had to put it just a little bit more on its side. So it's always good to listen to that cue. Once again, I, I, I don't like to flip cars, but sometimes I feel like it's necessary. And I saw all these procedures and I thought to myself, like, okay, I feel like it's necessary to flip these cars. Because they're going to be utilizing these cars. And it's going to end up for a fast paced game. And I think what happened is they, they saw that I wasn't leveling that fast. They weren't checking to see if I was hitting first. Uh, they just saw that I wasn't leveling up fast. So they took their time to get think apps and uh, get the map pieces. And the best way to beat Blake is to rush her. I mean, yes, she has good at early game, but if you rush play before like, level 10, you'll be preset for both things. And I'm just trying to focus card very pathetically. And I'll finally get it. I'm like, I'm <laughs> literally, two map pieces. It took me to flip all the cars that were in fire terror area. 
No. The survivors are smart. They do not do fire tower first. You think they would do fire tower first because it's kind of farther away from um, where the dark one spawns. Dark one spawn don't spawn in the top upper part of the map. So fire tower is the kind of top right side of the map. So you think that doing pages would be better in case of the dark ones spawn. Um, if the if it's at there at Mama's Liquors, I don't think it spawns by the pond over there. Um, that's up north from Mama's Liquors. So I thought it would be more um, at, near Camp Greenberg or Bullyard Swamp, that area. Fashion Farms, even. Uh, but later you'll see that the Dark Ones are at Dead End. So they make the right decision to go to Mama's Liquors first. Uh, I think about flipping this car, but I decide not to, and I accidentally trap the tree first, so it makes it harder to trap the chest here, so I have to actually double back and go away from it and come back to it, because it's not giving me the indication. Now, she makes noise there. I note the location, and to be honest, I don't really care. I'm just uh, trying to level up here. But I decided to go head over there because she's making noise. I might as well. I don't know why she's making noise. Um, we should never alert the demon, no matter what. I could understand if I was nearby, but I wasn't even close to where she was. So, um, I know there's the dark ones there, and I saw a chest as well, so I decided to trap it. Just again, I'm trying to get to threat level 10 before uh, they start the first point. They still need one map piece. I thought I saw the warrior ash in this little shack, and you could trap that shack out, which is pretty nice. But he wasn't there. So I kind of just like hang out to see if they're greedy enough to go in there. Um, I see that warrior ash is not greedy. And he alerts his team that I'm there. Uh, I thought I could get a scare on the Henry here and kind of throw him in there. I guess it'll be hard to down him, even if I get him in there. So I'm trying to think on what kind of target priority I should do. Now I think th I thought they set off the the trap there at Shock the Auto, Auto, and so I kind of like hanging back, trying to see if I could uh, get through on them and then throw him in there. And you'll see that I was able to get him and I immediately dodged back. He doesn't have a gun. So he can't get the damage on me. But he can hit me with a melee weapon. And Henry does the smart thing, blocks the door. Because Henry does something very smart. The humans now know the location of the lost pages and Tandarian So I am able to get gear, get a lot of frontal energy here. And I start Unfortunately, they got a lot of damage on Calder in there. And he blocks me here. But I can get past him, but it's too late. He already gets the, the heal off. So, he does something very smart that I, I recognize this skill there. <laughs> but I'm literally just trying to get as much damage on this. Powerful because he's going to be the easier one to die. Now the problem is here. I should have probably dropped the unit, and I could have got secured the down. But 
one that I'm not really worried about. And we did use his ability, so I could have secured the ground if I was smart enough and kind of ran away with it. So now I see that they have two cars here, so I try to flip one car with the other. But unfortunately, the car gets stuck in the other one. I kind of just roll out and I try to flip it from behind, but that doesn't work because I don't have the momentum. So I push it towards the dark ones. We can get this car at the dark ones, but um, it's going to cost them some damage to get it. Now, I don't have Inferno Energy to possess that car as well, but I know they're only taking one. That's so why I thought I'm, they're going to Dagger, not Pages. But they make the smart decision and go for Pages because it's further. And to be honest, I don't know where they're going to be choice. Because they do end up all dying from the storm. But I feel like they could have been better. Like, it would have been better if they went for pages. Even though it is further, uh, they wouldn't have gotten caught in the storm like they did. But the reason they get caught was because the they went to a place to get a shimp that normally does like has one shimp, but it's not worth it. It's a waste of time. I run past them because I'm like, oh, I haven't trapped up Mom's liquors. Now this team um, keeps reducing their fear. Like I haven't possessed them once, and you could not make the argument like, well, you didn't possess them because you don't want to fear. But Plague isn't a demon that is m meant to possess survivors. Um, I feel like Plague is one of the hardest demons to get real fear on survivors. Her strength comes from her units, not from possessions. That's Ball and Puppeteer. Like, the only reason I would possess is just to go for the levels. I'm already at a decent level here to actually do anything. And I pointed to that area right there because I already said Ma I was commentating in this game that you could place Cauldron right here and trap him. And I'll be doing that later. But you'll see that how well they help each other to get out of that situation. They destroy Cauldron very fast. And I don't chop out this whole area just enough where the leads kind of do a lot of damage. Now, if they had a hunter here, what I do here would be probably very bad. I summon all my units at once. And if they had a hunter with a grenade launcher, like they would have been able to take care of the basics I spawned in an instant, even with Baldwin. Like just two two hits with Baldwin, uh, with a grenade launcher, and they would all been destroyed. But I'm kind of confident because they're all warriors. Um. So. Yeah. The support is, has a submachine gun, which I think is perfect for the cauldron. Um, like I said, I summon all my basics here because I feel confident that like they're not going to be able to do anything. Here. I start going with the pincer and I stay in cauldron over here, so it doesn't cost that much energy. Now this is with the enemies' ability. I can't do anything, but I see that Arthur is in that puddle. So he can't dodge. So I start getting pitching on him as well. Now, my base is almost dead here because, unbeknownst to me during the game, Warrior Ass has a legendary chance. Now, I think I could have done if I just got a little light there. But, unfortunately, I didn't. And. I should have done a closer blast instead of a stomp. I thought that I was going to be a range for a stomp to secure that down. But I've got enough downs here to actually really do some damage. Uh, I'm not really placing points in until I am uh, have my units back. So, at 3 seconds here, I'm waiting for my call to again. Um while placing traps and now I'm gonna go back to work here. 
So if they were smart, what they would do is not get the golden anyway. They would just get out of the range of something. And for some reason, I'm auto aiming onto the warrior ash when I was trying to aim for the Arthur here. And the way you do the pincer attack on controllers for the PlayStation is R1 and triangle. And you press those at the same time. So, they get the point here. But it looks like they don't have the shims. Really? And. I'm not stringing the game along uh, here, but I'm just kind of trying to show that you don't need to continuously pressure the survivors. Like, yeah, I'm going back for them, but it's kind of like the only time I try to really do something is when I try to trap them in the cauldron. Usually that's what I do, but like once I trap them in the cauldron, I kind of just leave them alone. Uh, I haven't put any points in the boss because like I'm not specced into it, so there's no real point to. Um, I'm trying to find like a good point, place to like trap them here with Cauldron. If I trapped them in the kitchen there, they could jump out the window. So I see that they're going to the mini mart here. Which is... It's really good. Now there's a lot of elites on the unit, so I think maybe they could start really doing damage, but they're kind of not paying attention. And... I'm kind of hoping that one of them walk in there. But I noticed that they're all going for the car now. So I run him in to this corner. Now this corner isn't the best. And the problem is here that they're all attacking all of them. By the time I... Like what I should do is this thing here. Like I said, they just work called very quickly. And... So what this Warrior Ash does is very good. He drops the car as close as possible so they don't set off the trap. So I kind of try and take that away from them, make them force them to run in there. I said I'd kill the unit, but I don't care because it's damaging the car. And I'm going to position the car right here so that they have to keep hitting it. So I don't lose infernal energy. And they destroy the car. But that's because I thought to myself, like, oh, I'm just going to down a little. But then I was like, oh, wait a second, I need to... Let them go to the next point to show that I, you know, be putting constant pressure on survivors with plague. Like that's not necessary with plague to have, and it gets like nerve-wracking to do that as a demon. Just, I think to myself like, oh, I could trap him in a little hut, but he was smart there and reduced his fear. Um, I have my dash soon, so I think I'm going to use it, but. Be honest, he's too far away. I was gonna possess a unit, but then I, once again, I remember, like, I'm not supposed to down these guys here. And it's kind of like, because I'm not gonna down them, I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do here? Like, they're reducing their fear, and I, honestly, it doesn't matter to me because. I want them to get to the next point as fast as possible, but I was dumb and took all the <coughs> all the cars. <coughs> so I'm like, okay, I'll just drop out this area. There's no new shimps here. I can't really trap them with cauldron here. So I just trap out this area, and they keep wanting to reduce their fear. Which, the plague, it's not necessary. Like, yeah, you have a ton of infernal energy to, like, stay in the survivor, but 
You're not gonna do like half the uh, damage that you want, and then you're just gonna lose all your entire energy. The units can do more damage than them because they seem to survive it. So I'm literally just watching them here, waiting them for them to go to the next point. But they're taking their time, so I just summon a bunch of stuff to kind of like move them along. Uh, I know there's a fire source here, I just want the Inferno energy. I think, oh, I'll place Cloud in here. They can't, he can't go out that way, he's forced to go this way. I consider possessing him so I could cancel out his ability. But, um... Once again, I decided against that I'm just... I'm trying to show that you could, you don't have to put pressure on them every day. But at the same time, they're just taking their time here. Really. Like, if I wanted to, I could've just... used a basic and to take them down and waste time. If they have eight minutes, if I would've been pressing pressure on them, they would have probably got to this point in four minutes if I didn't down them. So I don't have problems, so I just summon everything and now I start possessing things because um yeah. This is like how Demon is supposed to be played quote unquote. I feel like that's how they would do it was so originally designed. To play like this. But survivors are so OP, you kind of have to keep putting pressure on them. Or they're going to recover so much that you're not going to be able to do anything. Now he's in the goo here. Yeah, I thought he was. Yeah. So I'm kind of just using my elite. They're being very smart and staying out of the cauldron now. So my elite is dying faster and the bounce bar is gone. So he has a purple sword, and the warrior has a legendary chainsaw. So they're both doing increased bounds by damage to me. And the enemy has an axe. So they all have wonderful weapons to go up against me. Even though, once again, I'm using the elite here. And even though they have all those wonderful weapons, they're not doing as much damage as they should be doing against me. And that Arthur does not have thick skin. I don't know what kind of. He probably just has a build that's greater influence. So he has 20% greater influence. And he's probably expecting the damage as well. So I get the the Henry down, and I want to keep this Henry down and make him bleed out because the next time I down him, he'll bleed out faster. But unfortunately, I'm unable to do that. So I start putting the rest of my points in the boss because that's the last thing I'm gonna do. Um, and you see why I don't summon the boss. I start trapping this area because I'm going to throw them upstairs there. And trap them on with Calder. Um, but I start seeing them setting off a ton of traps. So I decide to go back over. And kind of just check on them. I should have put uh, an elite portal, proxy portal, near uh, the dark ones. But I wasn't really thinking that. I was thinking I'm going to trap one of them up here. And they're gonna have to go for the, the res to res them. And then I can go for a book. And I kinda wanted this to go to a book phase. But then I just had so much like I was laughing so hard. Not because they were doing something wrong. But because they they got stuck. Um They were doing a ton of damage to me, so they I thought I could just block with one elite. But yeah, that warrior ass and that legendary chainsaw and Arthur's aura 
who's just wrecking you. This is the part where he makes the mistake. There was no reason to come up here. At all. Now, the mistake I do make... Um, uh, he's actually possessing his basic. Because... He has his ability going. And... He's doing a hell of a lot of damage to me. And he's dodging everything from me. So I had to drop this unit and then... I thought to myself, okay... I should have sent him an elite. You're gonna watch how fast... I die here. And that's with 20% damage reduction. On... The warrior. But his mastery and the legendary chainsaw... Is just doing so much to me. And then once Calvin's down... I just go down, yeah. Now she died, she went down because of the call there. And she gets the heal off. They wasted chance here. Now I got my Inferno energy back. I have 10 seconds for call again. Yeah. This is like what a why I like the cooldown reduction. I saw her place down her ability, so I thought to myself, okay, I can still stay up here and do some damage here. And you'll see that, yes, they work my balance part. But I'm still not dead with all four of them. Yes, I'm only able to get a, a uh, hit and stop, but that's a lot. So I'm like, okay, I can place Cauldron here. I didn't. I thought they could get past, but um, they were able to get past. So now I have some fun kinds of blocking and off here. I kind of make the mistake here. And I go to the side there so I don't go past them. But now I, I want to go past him. I see the storm coming. So I block him off here. But once again, that legendary ch chainsaw is uh, wrecking me. So I'm like, okay, I gotta hit him now. Try to knock him off. Here. And then I block him off with a basic. They had no reason to destroy Cauldron there. They wasted time doing that. And this is where I just started laughing because... Yeah. It was just funny. <laughs> they need to be... Uh, they needed to uh, like recognize what was happening there and the surroundings and that they were taking way too long to be there. They should have walked past Cauldron. Uh, like the Warriors did. So, that's the video. Thank you for watching.